Hello, Facebookers. Hello, YouTubers. Good evening. Welcome to Live Irish Myths. I'm Anthony Murphy. This is episode 70 of Live Irish Myths and the last fourth of four of the Tugal uh, Brunia da Derga, the destruction of Da Derga's hostel, which we've been enjoying. But every good thing must come to an end. Hope you're all keeping well and that you're uh, safely isolating and uh, that you're all in good form. Um, yes, been really enjoying the interaction on uh, the Mythical Ireland community. Just going to bring up my uh, uh, my links here. And uh, yeah, a lot of people sharing a lot of very interesting stuff. Uh, nice book collections growing. Um, let me just have a quick look. Uh, who who was it? If you're not there already, I recommend Mandy McCurl got a copy of The Age of Newgrange, which featured in one of the episodes recently uh, by uh, William Battersby. And that's a rare one because that was self-published. And I wouldn't say there was too many of those published. I'd say there was a fairly limited print run of those. Uh, and it's it stamped, actually, uh, Laurana... Laurel and Condonami, which is a uh, County Mead Library. So uh, it, it, it came from this sort of area. Uh, Erica Rivertree is reading Mythical Ireland, which is great. Some of you have acquired Michael James's Mythic Ireland, which is a fabulous book, uh, it, or, or uh, the later reprint of it, Ireland, A Sacred Journey. Uh, but I'm really enjoying the interaction on there. 136. Wow. I think that's a record. Excuse me while I take a screenshot. I have no idea where that traffic's coming from, but if you're new to Live Irish Myths, you're very welcome along. This evening on YouTube, the first of the commenters is Daisy Peters, who says, Falcha, Anthony, and everyone, we're very grateful, as am I, to have you along. Erica Bow, sorry, is above that. I apologize. Erica Bow, Tranona Wat to all, Tranona Wat to Safane, Erica Bow, you're very welcome. Jackie Stevenson says, Hello, Anthony, on the tour, ready for the final installment. Gia Gritch, Jackie. Mandy McCurl, the aforementioned, says, hello, everyone. Mild tonight, and the sun is trying to come out on the Isle of Mull. It is out here, and it's a fabulously mild evening. It's a really beautiful summer day here. Uh, so we're very lucky. Uh, who else? Pocket Rocket says, hello, it's me, HRH, on YouTube, Fight twice the fun. So Helen it goes as Pocket Rocket on YouTube. Ha Your Royal Highness? Collective bow and genuflecting or down on one knee or bowing of the head, whatever it is you happen to do, 170, 176, where's this traffic coming from? I've never seen so many people before. You're all very welcome. Irish technical thinker, that's Marcus and Rachel in Belfast, sitting outside the back garden with birds tweeting about me and having a cup of tea, watching the sunset over the rolling green hills of Ireland. Magic begins. Brilliant. Adam Brady says, how are you, Anthony? Thanks for your time and knowledge. I'm great, Adam, and thanks for joining us on Live Irish Mits. And on Facebook, oh, big audience tonight for some reason. Barbara Barney says, hi, Anthony. Gia Gritch, Barbara. Aaron Doret is watching. Falcha, Aaron. Freya Shoholm says, Giaghiv, Anton Augustua, Giaghich Freya. Jack Durkin says, hi, everyone. Hello, Jack. Paula Snow Queen is waving, Giaghich. Judy McQueen says, hello, Anthony. Slauncha, Judy. Jack Durkin, happy episode 70. What's a shockto? A shocked, a shockto. I was shocked when I heard we'd reached 70 episodes. Terry Lynn, never mind. As a, Terry Lynn Zahariah says, hello from beautiful, sunny Colorado. Fantastic. Nice to have you along, Terry Lynn. Yvette Tillema, hello to uh, from the... Adirondack Mountains in Keene, New York, where the weather is glorious, violets and dandelions blooming. The mythical Ireland community is blooming too. It's been brilliant over there. Fantastic. Debbie Daly says, hi, Anthony Jigrich. Debbie, Margaret Ring is watching. Welcome to the house. Margaret Conasato too. Patricia McAteer is watching. Helen Guinan, you're not getting two waves. <laughs> you're not getting two bows. Ah, no, no, no. Of course we will all bow in your royal bowiness and all that. Uh, Rowan Grove says, greetings to the Tua from sunny Colorado. Two of my cats have joined me today told them it wasn't the cave of the cats episode but they insisted sleek black mara and fluffy white arwen are perched here on the desk that sounds lovely i i would not have coda and saskia perched on the desk here i suspect the camera would be just knocked over and everything would be sent into disarray barbara kling says hello anthony and everyone from another beautiful day in vermont hope you're all doing well doing great barbara thanks for dropping in scott gracie hootsman what about you to Tuatha, Tua, 
uh, were great, Scott. Falcha, Nancy Nichols says, blessings to all. Banafi, Tussa, Fane, Nancy. Uh, Angel Barboni Smith says, just watch your interview with James. Loved it. I'm glad you enjoyed that, Angel. Margaret Ring says, good evening, Anthony, and all the lovely to a Falcha, Trononawa. Mike and Jeanette Naylor are in Princeton in New Jersey, and they say it's lovely to be here, and likewise, it's lovely for them to be here. Yeah, lovely to have them here. Emer Harper says, hello from a homesick Irish woman in Sweden. I genuinely do appreciate your positive efforts over this difficult period. Thank you for your work. Well, thank you, Emer. That's very nice of you to say so, and I'm very happy to do it. Uh, hello, Anthony, says Nick Eska Casterton. Seven, episode 70, and it's flown, and long may it continue, the amazing tour. I have to take another. I'm very sorry for doing that, but we've never, ever seen any more than 130 people watching, and we're up at 100, and, well, we were up at 180 there a moment ago. Ralph Waldron says, when I was a kid, we had a rambling house across the road, but the tour did not come as far. That's more than a fortnight ago. <laughs> I'd say it is. Heather Garen Rice says, went to the garden store yesterday, first anywhere other than the grocery store. Incredibly stressful with people who couldn't bother to pay attention to COVID guidelines. Yeah, we have some of that too, Heather, unfortunately. Yes, Anthony, great bookshelf sharing last night. Yeah, it's been great fun. You may have noticed the rest of the lights arrived. I was busy late last night putting those up. Susan Scott says, hello, Anthony, and all the two are from sunny and warm northwest Connecticut in the studio painting again. Love listening to stories as I work. Nice to have company in the studio. And if I might say, uh, I'm delighted to see Kirsten Salisbury. Your artwork is fabulous. Uh, and Patricia McAteer. It's lovely to see, uh, and I'm forg forgive me if I'm missing anyone, it's lovely to see all the great inspiration and the wonderful works of art that are being produced during this period. You're all uh, being inspired greatly by different things, and it's fantastic to see. Jim Conway says, thanks for your enlightenment today. Thanks, Jim. Glad to help where I can. I'll do my best to help you. Jason, just Jason, says, watching on YouTube and Facebook. Travels with Jason on YouTube. I'm in Lick Skillet, Kentucky. Gotta love that town name, Lick Skillet. Interesting one, all right. Tom King says, good evening, Anthony and the mighty Tua. That was one beautiful day. Hope you're keeping well. Looking forward for story time. You'd hardly need to light the forge on an evening like that, Tom. It's probably warm enough. <laughs> Alex Casterton says, evening, Anthony and Tua. Falcha, Alex. Longty Minosi says, salutations, Anthony and fellow Tua. Hello, Longty, and thank you for your interaction today on the Mythical Ireland community. We had great fun. Alex says it's really warm in Albion. Amazing weather. Kristen Gray Taggart says, hello, Anthony and Tua. Just stopping in for a quick hello. I have to run to work and I'll catch up with the story later. That's perfectly okay, Kristen. Work comes first. Maeve Fina Callahan says, Trinonawa, Anthony August Tua. Trinonawa, Maeve, I hope you're in good form. Pat Rowan is watching. Are you on the road today, Pat? Lovely to see you. And Pat, of course, is in Washington State. Uh, Henry Paddy Shearman is here again. Good evening, Tua. Good evening, Anthony. Uh, Trononawa, Henry, I hope you're in good form. John Roach, last night was special. The joy of hearing the tale read aloud made me think of a packed roundhouse with the storyteller pausing knowingly to take a sip of wine, 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 whilst his audience shouted, not difficult, that, like we used to shout Cracker Jack at the telly as kids, brilliant. <laughs> Teresa Delaney Conderla says, buenas tardes from sunny Ecuador. Fantastic, lovely evening here in Ireland, Teresa. Banakti from Ireland, blessings and grow more and great love to you from all of us here in Ireland. Alwyn Roy Badziak says, hello, Anthony and Thua from sunny Berkshire. Looking forward to the episode. Falcha, Alwyn. Nora Gaffney O'Connor says, evening, Anthony and all. Great weather today. See, so calm. Hope everyone's well. HRH, Helen. <laughs> Helen gets plenty of mentions. What did she call herself? Pocket Rocket. <laughs> That's a good disguise. Um, the blue starlight is with us. Beautiful to us, says Pat. Pat, keep her between the ditches. Hope you're in good form. Mariana Dunn, greetings and blessings to our Tua and Anthony from Alexandria, Virginia. Made it to episode 70. Isn't it amazing? I never thought we'd have you anyway who cares we're doing it and we're enjoying it so let's keep doing it uh don hilton says hi anthony and everyone here love from lancashire uh grow more earth uh, dawn from all of us erin durette says woo margaret's got her work cut out tonight love to you all dear and growing to a doris o'hara says hello anthony and everyone gia Gitch, doris helen says thank you hope all okay with you all good so far uh oh 
Helen Guinan is replying to Helen Guinan. Are you talking to yourself? No, never mind. That's what it says here on my screen that you're talking to yourself. <laughs> Grace Walker says, hi, lovely weather here on Long Island, New York. Love to all. Uh, uh, Falcha Roth, uh, Grace, thanks for dropping in. Paul Blockley says, hi, all from sunny South Wales. Sorry, I knocked the table. And the, the oh, we're over 200 now. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't contain myself. Uh, well, we're having similar weather across the water, Paul. Uh, but, you know, grab a stool, grab yourself a, a, a brew or a dram and, you know, sit by the fire and we'll tell a couple of stories. Train on the Irk. Hello, everyone. Having a nice talisker after a day of work in the garden. Slaunch it to all of you. Slaunch it. I, with my imaginary glass that I don't have. Oh, hang on. I do. I have, I have a, a glass of water. Next best thing. Neil Hughes, Giagwich Anthony from Coatbridge in Scotland. Giagwich, Neil, always nice to see our friends from Alba. Louise Sherrill says hello, Giagwich. Margaret Kiernan, hi, Anthony and the Tua. Up days later. Fall to Margaret. Raphael de Feliz, hello, everybody. Greetings from Italy. Ciao, Raphael, lovely to have you along. Jacinta McGee, McGee even says Giagwich to everyone. Hello, Jacinta, fall to. Veronica Casey, hey everyone, missed you all last night, but tuning in this evening. Good to have you along, Veronica. Pull up a pew, grab a brew. Annie Newton says, hi from Peru. Hope you're all safe and well. All keeping well so far, Annie, and I hope you're in the same situation. Scott Taggart says, Giagutch, Giagutch, Scott. Hello, 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 says Herum, Kerem Gogus. Hello, Kerem, my good friend. Conas ata tu, Kuivin o Gogon. <laughs> oh, it's a little joke between Kerem and I. Kerem is uh, Turkish and is a wonderful 3D artist who's who who has reconstructed lost Irish archaeological sites uh, such as Dronehenge and Ireland's Stonehenge. Uh, and uh, we said one day, I said we'd give him an Irish name, Quivin O'Gogon. Michael Bratton says hello from San Diego in California. Giagwicha we call. Uh, to to Catherine Barbara. Barbara is also in California. Hello, Catherine. Wonderful to have you along. Kirsten Salisbury. Thank you so much, Anthony and everyone, for your lovely, lovely feedback on my art. Your artwork is fabulous. Loved all the uh, uh, the megalithic art on the grass outside the entrance to that mound. Uh, a lot of that uh, very familiar from various uh, Irish uh, Stone Age sites. Lloyd Stillwell says hello again. Nice to see you in the house, Lloyd. Movanway says, Giorive, really missed joining in over the last few evenings. Loved reading about Old Irish on Facebook today. What would the Irish have said for hello in Old Irish in pre-Christian Ireland? Yeah, I know, because Giorgich is basically all we have, which literally means God be with you, you know? Interesting one. Mm. Perhaps Katrina, if she's around, will answer that. Or who is the other lady who popped up a moment ago? Oh with the Irish name I apologise you helped us last night uh, I'll see it again Nora Gaffney O'Connor saying hello to Tom Melanie Lynn is watching Falcha Melanie good to see you this evening as always a great pleasure Dave all Dave Russell evening even says hi all talking of synchronicity tonight 8 20 p.m. and 20 seconds it will be 2020 20, 2020 but there's a five in there somewhere <laughs> 2020 20 5 2020 ah who cares about the five let's just say 2020 2020 20, 20. connor kearney says hello all from dura dura which is Derry. hello connor tronona gary mccracken says good evening tronona Tossa fame gary nice to have you along kimberly field sipala says hi to all geoglitch kimberly miral naga i don't know how to pronounce your surname i do apologize says hello falcha you're welcome Pull up a stool and grab yourself a brew. Heather Pelkey says hello. Giagutch, Heather, nice to have you along. Brian Keefe O'Neill, I'm well prepared for the welcomes these days and grabbed a keg of homebrew beer off a friend. I nearly ran out of the devil's yeasty juice last night. Beep, beep from Belfast. I am Brian. Eva Anderson says hello from sunny and warmish Gothenburg. Warm ish, ish in brackets. Gothenburg in Sweden. Uh, Trinonoa, Eva. Melanie Lynn, hello, Anthony and Tua. Banachti, Melanie, nice to see you. Anne McCallum says hello from Canada. Falcha Anne, Susan Mullen Lacerna says hey, you all. Rainy Rally, North Carolina. Ah, oh, well, look, not to worry. The sun will be back soon, I'm sure. Welcome along. Heather P 
Halki, hello from Delaware. Freezing here at work. Okay, well, turn up the uh, temperature, Heather. Put on the uh, heating or just don an extra coat. John Noonan says, hello from Dundalk. Come on, the town. John, it's a great pleasure to see you. Just between us, I have done dark links in my family, but I don't discuss it in front of my Drahada friends. <laughs> Neil Hughes says, dog the ditch, dog the ditch, dog the, dog the glitch. Yes, interesting. Uh, perhaps they did, uh, Neil, uh, say dog the glitch instead of glitch. Nancy Woods, oh, Maura is calling in Nancy. Gillian Gorgerty is watching. Hello, Gillian. Only a stone's throw away here, the closest of all the viewers. Kelly Young says, from... Walhalla, South Carolina. Hello, Kelly. Falcher. Sean Ryan says, hello, Gia. Good, Sean. Tarini Pendleton says, Banachty all from Laguna Beach, California. Banachty, Tarini. Marlon O'Hirmac, isn't the old Irish for hello? Oro, like the song. Oro, she, dova, dova, awalia. I don't know for sure. Just taking a crack at it. Could be possible. Lillis O'Leary says, Tongu. I have no idea what that means. Lillis, you're very welcome along. Oh, we're caught up. Finally. Wow. Seamus Mara said, visited a roundhouse last night. Cairn Bon Newry. Okay, Anthony. Seamus, good evening to you. I hope you're keeping well. Austin Davy says, hi all. Geoglitch Austin. Stephanie Phelps says, hello from the deserts of Arizona. Love your work and sharing. Healthy blessings. And the same right back to you. Uh, Stephanie, I hope you're in good form. Haven't seen you. Where was it? Glastonbury last year, wasn't it? Let me see now. What are we on? This is episode number 70, and we'll call that 16 and a half minutes. Okay, so tonight we are going to conclude the story. Togal Brunia da Derga, the destruction of da Derga's hostel, one of the great old Irish epics. And we've had to do it over four episodes because it would have been too long to do in less. Maureen O'Leary says, heading for beautiful Minnesota Lake Country for early start to Memorial Weekend. But first, live Irish mitts. Great that you have your priorities in order, Maureen, but it's lovely to see you as always. Veronica Casey says, it's been beautiful today in Wiltshire with the sun beaming. Brilliant. Wonderful. Neil Hughes says, my town, Coatbridge, doesn't have an Asgelga name, but during our St. Patrick's Festival, we call it Drichid on Kota. Brilliant stuff, Neil. Improvise where, where possible. So last night, we had a lot of, you know, you do not rule me, said Inkel. Clouds of blood will come to you. After that, what did you see, asked Launay Druth. And we're going to continue on uh, by Inkel reporting what he saw next. So if it's okay with you, we'll carry on. I saw a strapping fellow before the same apartment in the centre of the house, said Inkel. A shameful haircut he had. And every hair on his head was as white as a mountain bog. Perhaps he was um, socially isolated and he'd had to cut his own hair, uh, as many people have had to. I'm very lucky in that my wife has assisted me with the job, which has been brilliant. I swear by the gods, my people swear by Tongu. Yes, gods, plural. In this version, it seems to be singular for some reason. Gold earrings on his ears and a cloak of many colours about him. Nine swords in his hands and nine silver shields and nine apples of gold. He threw up the swords and shields and apples and only one remained in his hand. But none fell to the ground, and their movement was like that of bees going past one another on a beautiful day. Oh, Scott, that is a difficult question for me to answer right now. Let me come back to it later. When I saw him, he was at his most splendid, but as I looked, everything fell to the floor. And a great class clatter arose about him. Robin Edgar tells us, I cut what is left of my hair for the second time a few nights ago. Yes, some of my colleagues have taken to just running the clippers over their heads and, and giving it the L number one, you know? I mean, short back and sides. What about no back or sides? <laughs> we have known each other since I was a lad and never before 
has that trick failed you? Alas, alas, fair Papa Conora, the trickster replied. It was proper that this should happen, for a keen, baleful eye is staring at me. A man with three pupils is watching the passing of three companies, and his watching is nothing at all for him. Baleful, that. A battle will be fought. It will be remembered until the day of judgment, and there will be evil at the entrance to the hostel. After that, he took his swords in hand and his silver shields and his apples of gold, and everything fell to the floor again, and there was a great clatter. He put everything away then and abandoned his feet, his feet F-E-A-T, <laughs> <laughs> just in case you pictured his feet walking off on their own <clears throat> and abandoned his feet and said fair call you rise now do not permit the slaughter of your pig find out who is at the entrance of the house doing injury to the men of the hostel just checking where i have to finish tonight finish at the end i know ah good fair kulge Fur lay, fur gar, fur rogel, and fur rogan are there, said fair Collu. They have announced a deed that was not expected. Connor's forgiveness by the five sons of Dundessa, his five beloved foster brothers. Explain that, fur rogan. Who recited that poem? Not difficult, that, said fur rogan. That one was Tolchainye, the royal fool of the king of Tower, Chower, Connor's trickster, a man of great power. Three nines will fall by him. There is that number again, ladies and gentlemen. Thrice nine, twenty-seven, lunar, sidereal month, perhaps. Three nines will fall by him at the first onslaught, and he will match the performance of anyone in the hostel. And, though wounded, he will escape afterwards on his account alone there should be no destruction happy the man who spares him said launay druth you do not rule me said inkail clouds of blood will come to you after that what did you see said launay druth i saw nine men before the same apartment said inkail Fair yellow manes they had, and short trousers, and speckled red tunics, and shields, lest they be struck. Melanie Corpy says, hi, Anthony, and hi, all. USA, Georgia here. Geoglitch, Melanie, nice to have you along. Ta hi, Yen uh, is uh, saying something which I presume is something along the lines of hello. I'm sorry I'm unable to translate right now. Uh, my wife cuts my hair, says Lloyd Stilwell. It's fine until I hear her giggling behind me. <laughs> then I know something went wrong. Maybe she 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 shaved some lettering into the back of your head, like slap me or something like that. <laughs> uh, she wouldn't be that bold. I saw nine men before the same apartment, said Inkail. Fair yellow manes they had, and short trousers and speckled red tunics, and shields lest they be struck. A sword with an ivory hilt in the hand of each man, and anyone who entered the house would be struck with those swords. No one dared enter the house without their permission. Explain that, Fur Rogan. Not difficult, that, said Fur Rogan. Those are the three... Muchmeichnecks of me, Mija, or Mia. That's me to you and I. The three Bualtoks of Brega and the three Sostachs of Schlieve Fuat. Nine tens will fall by them, not ninety, but nine tens, at the first onslaught, and they will match the performance of anyone in the hostel, and, though wounded, they will escape afterwards. Woe to him who carries out this destruction, if only because of those nine, said Laune Druth. You do not rule me, said Inkail. Clouds of blood will come to you. After that, 
what did you see? Asked Launay Druth. Uh, Barbara Murphy says, hi from Tucson, Arizona. Lovely to have another Warku in the house. Connors to talk to. Barbara, how are you? Bethany Cutler says, hello from a rainy Idaho. Falchi. Tranona what, Bethany? You're not the boss of me. <laughs> hello from Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, says Summer Storfer. Hello, Summer. You're very, very welcome. Falchi. I saw another apartment with two men in it. Of course, the numbers are changing. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's nine, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two. That part of the tale is uh, is not necessarily easy to uh, uh, to foretell. Stout and strong they were with short trousers and they were dusky red, short hair at the back of their heads and long hair on top. Each was as quick as a mill wheel going past the other, the one going to the apartment, the other to the hearth. Explain that, Fur Rogan. Not difficult that, said Fur Rogan. Nia and Bruthne, they, Connor's two servers, the best pair in Eru. That is why they are swarthy and why their hair stands up because they visit the fire so often. <laughs> no pair in the world are better servers than they. Three nines will fall by them at the first onslaught, and a man for each weapon, and a man for each man. And they will match the performance of any pair in the hostel. They will boast of victories over kings and royal heirs and plundering chieftains, and, though wounded, they will escape afterwards. Woe to him who carries out this destruction, if only because of those two, said Launay Druth. You do not rule me, said Inkale. Clouds of blood will come to you. After that, what did you see? asked Launay Druth. I saw the apartment next to Connor's, said Inkale. Three chief warriors were there. And they were just turning grey. They wore dark grey shirts. And each of their limbs was as thick as a man's waist. Each man had a huge black sword. As long as a weaver's beam. That could split a hair floating on the water. The man in the centre had a great lance. With 50 rivets through it. And its shaft would be a load for a team of oxen. He brandished the lance until sparks as big as eggs all but flew from it. And then he struck the butt against his palm three times. Before them was a great food cauldron, large enough for a bullock, with an appalling dark liquid in it. And the man dipped the lance into the liquid. If the lance was not quenched quickly, it blazed up over its shaft you would have thought there was a roaring fire in the upper part of the house. Explain that, Fur Rogan. Not difficult that, said Fur Rogan. Three heroes there, the three best that ever took weapons in Eru. Shenche, son of Alil, Dovtach, Dolchenga, and Gobnu, son of Lorngech, Lorgnech. And the lance that was in the hand of Dovtok, that was the Lewin of Kelcher, son of Otakur, that was found at the Battle of Moitura. Whenever the blood of enemies is about to flow from the lance, a cauldron full of venom is required to quench it. Otherwise, the lance will blaze up in the fist of the man carrying it, and it will pierce him or the lord of the royal house. Each thrust of this lance will kill a man, even if it does not reach him. If the lance is cast, it will kill nine men, and there will be a king or royal heir or plundering chieftain in their number. I swear by what my people swear by, the loan of Kelcher will serve drinks of death to a multitude tonight. 300 will fall by these three at the first onslaught and a man for each weapon and a man for each man and they will match the performance 
of any trio in the hostel. They will boast of victories over kings and royal heirs and plundering chieftains, and though wounded, they will escape afterwards. Woe to him who carries out this destruction, if only because of those three, said Laume Druth. You do not rule me, said Inkel. Clouds of blood will come to you. After that, what did you see? asked Laune Druth. I saw an apartment with three men in it, said Inkel. Three strong, powerful men. A man passing by would not eye their dark, uncouth faces for fear of the terror that would result. Rough-haired garments all about them, and no other clothing on them from head to toe. Their horrible horse-like manes reached their sides. Furious warriors, they were quick to their swords, and they struck stoutly against enemies. Each bore an iron flail with seven chains. Each chain was twisted into three strands, and each had at its end a knob as heavy as a bar for lifting ten pieces of burning metal. Huge ox hides they wore, and the four cornered clasps that fastened them were as thick as a man's thighs, and the hair from the hides went through them. Each man had an iron staff as long and thick as an outer yoke. Each staff had nine chains of iron, and each chain had a pestle of iron as long and thick as an outer yoke. These men were dejected, and they were horrible to behold. No one in the house was not aware of them. Explain that, Fur Rogan. Vicky Wallace Suttal has joined us, Fulge. Trinonawa Vicky, and I wonder if Evan is with you, Falcha Evan. Hello to you. Fur Rogan fell silent. Difficult that, he said. I think is that only the second time in the whole story that he's actually said it's difficult? I know no trio in Eru like that, unless they are the three churls whom Cuchulain spared at Forbus Fair Falgi. They slew fifty warriors while under his protection. And he protected them because of their strangeness. Evan is here. Hello, Evan. Olja, hello. Good evening to you. These are their names. Shrub Dara, son of Doran Buja. Konchend Kind Maige, or Mai, M-A-G-H-E. And Fiedschgeim, son of Skippe. 300 will fall by them at the first onslaught. And they will match the performance of any trio in the hostel. If they encounter you, your fragments will pass through a corn sieve. Pardon me, after they have destroyed you with their iron flails. I think what he's trying to say is they'll fairly make smithereens of you. Woe to him who carries out this destruction, if only because of those three, said Laune Druth. You do not rule me, said Inkale. Clouds of blood will come to you. After that, what did you see? asked Laune Druth. I saw another apartment with one man in it, said Inkil, and two lads before him, both with long hair, the one as dark as the other was fair. Diane Green is watching. Jigwich, Diane. The warrior had blood red hair and a blood red mantle, and his cheeks were ruddy. Very beautiful blue eyes he had and a green cloak about him, and a wooded white tunic with red embroidery, and an ivory-hilted sword in his hand. Oh my, I do apologise. I need sleep. He supplied food and drink to every apartment in the hostel, and that's, let's be honest, that's a lot of apartments, and waited upon the host. Explain that, Fur Rogan. Not difficult, that, said Fur Rogan. I know that man. Dodurga. It is he who built the hostel. Since he became a hospitaller, the entrances to the hostel have never been closed, save in the direction from which the wind blows. Since he became a hospitaller, his cauldron 
has never gone from the fire, and it boils food for the men of Eru. The two lads before him are his foster sons, the children of the king of the lion, Muradach and Korpre. Three tens will fall by this trio at the entrance to the house. And they will boast of victories over kings and royal heirs and plundering chieftains, and they will escape afterwards. <laughs> Sneaky yawn. I just opened the window. Happy he who spares those children, said Launay Druth. Better a victory of sparing them than a victory of wounding them. They should be spared if only because of that man, for he would be capable of protecting them. You do not rule me, said Inkale. Clouds of blood will come to you. After that, what did you see? asked Launay Druth. I saw an apartment with three men in it, said Inkale. Three blood-red cloaks about them and blood-red tunics and blood-red hair on their heads. They were blood-red to the teeth. Three blood-red shields hung overhead, along with three blood-red spears. Three blood-red horses were bridled at the entrance to the house. Explain that, Fur Rogan. Not difficult, that, said Fur Rogan. They are the three nephews that lied in the she. The punishment inflicted upon them by the king of the she is that they be destroyed three times by the king of Chower. Conora, son of Etherscale, is the last king by whom they are to be destroyed. These men will escape you. To fulfil their destruction they have come, but they will wound no one, and they will not be wounded. After that, what did you see? asked Launay Druth. I saw three men in the centre of the house near the door, said Inkale not in an apartment. Three barbed staffs were in their hands, as fast as a rabbit, each of them round the others and towards the door. Short speckled trousers on them and grey cloaks. Explain that, Fur Rogan. Not difficult that, said Fur Rogan. The three doorkeepers of the King of Chower, they, Echor and Tochor and Tegmung, the sons of Ursa and Kola, or Kovla. Three champions equally matched will fall by them, and their performance will equal that of any trio in the hostel, and, though wounded, they will escape afterwards. Woe to him who carries out this destruction, if only because of these three, said Launay Druth. You do not rule me said Inkale. Clouds of blood will come to you. After that, what did you see? asked Launay Druth. I saw at the front fire, said Inkale, a black-haired man with one eye and one arm and one leg. He was carrying a singed, black-bristled pig towards the fire, and it was squealing. With him he had a large, large-lipped woman. A large, comma, large-lipped woman. Explain that, Fur Rogan. Not difficult, that, said Fur Rogan. Fur Kalyu was the man with the pig, and the woman is his wife, Kikul. They are the instruments by which you may lawfully destroy Conora tonight. Woe to the face that blushes between them. Indeed, Fur Kalyu and his pig are gesh to Conora. And gesh is that word that we said translates to taboo. Jennifer, oh, please forgive me. <sighs> ah, Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer Foley says hello. Gia glitch, Jennifer. Woe to him who carries out this destruction, if only because of these two, said Launay Druth. You do not rule me, said Inkale. Clouds of blood will come to you. After that, what did you see? asked Launay Druth. <laughs> this is a little bit like Groundhog Day, isn't it? Uh, 
<laughs> okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to take a 10-minute siesta, okay? I'm just going to lie down here and have a little bit of a kip, and I'll come back to you in 10 minutes, all right? Just don't, just complete, just ignore me for your... <sighs> I, I apologize. I do apologize sincerely. I saw an apartment with three nines in it. Brian Langan is watching. Connors to to Brian. You're very welcome along. Inkale said, fair yellow hair they had, and all were equally handsome. Each had a black cape with a white hood and a blood red crest and an iron brooch. Each bore a very large black sword that could split a hair floating on the water, and each had a shield with serrated edges. Explain that, Fur Rogan. Not difficult, that, said Fur Rogan, but just let me have ten minutes sleep and I'll explain it when I'm feeling a little bit less tired. <laughs> <laughs> the three sons of Batya of the Bre Brehan are they three plunderers three nines will fall by them at the first onslaught and they will match the performance of any trio in the hostel and they will escape afterwards woe to him who carries out this destruction if only because of those three said Laune Druth you do not rule me said Inkale you know it off by heart at this stage. I can hear you all saying, clouds of blood will come to you. After that, what did you see? Asked Launay Druth. I saw three fools at the end of the fire. And he's not referring to the Tua, by the way, said Inkale, all wearing dun mantles. If the men of Eru were assembled in one place, and if the bodies of his father and his mother were before each man, no one could help but laugh. <laughs> I know that feeling. If there were 30 hundred in the house, none would manage to sit or lie down because of those three. When the king's eye lights upon them, it laughs with each glance. Explain that, Fur Rogan. <laughs> Explain that, Anthony, <laughs> says Margaret. Yeah, what have you been up to the last few evenings? Well, last night I was putting bloody lights up till about half past midnight. That's probably the problem. <sighs> not to <laughs> explain that, not to, I'm falling apart here, we're going to have to do this uh, episode all over again, uh, I apologise to the YouTubers as well. Uh, the, the Woodsies in Monaster Voice are making a very good point, this story is nuts, would you have been better to read the end and anal analyse the build-up? <laughs> yeah, probably. I did say, didn't I, in the first episode, that you know, most of the story is a spoiler, so that when you actually get to the end, you know, basically nothing happens because you've seen it all, you know. Not difficult that, said Fur Rogan. Mlitha, Mlitha and Mael and Amliha, they, the three fools of the King of Eru. And please forgive me, my early Irish pronunciations are not good. My later Irish pronunciations are even worse. A man will fall by each of them, and they will match the performance of any trio in the hostel, and they will escape afterwards. It doesn't say, and though wounded, so they mustn't get wounded. Woe to him who carries out this destruction, if only because of those three, said Launay Druth. You do not rule me, said Inkale. Clouds of blood will come to you. After that, what did you see? Asked Launay Druth. Blah, blah, blah. Repeat, repeat, repeat. The end. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> we could nearly predict it. You know, what did you see? I thought I saw three ridiculous looking guys in an apartment. Uh, and though wounded, they will escape. A 300 will fall by them. And, uh, you know, you do not rule me. Clouds of blood will come to you. What else did you see? Well, I saw another three men in another apartment. And they were dressed ridiculously. And they had silly hair. And they had funny eyes. And they, you know, all sorts of things. Uh, and you know they will kill a hundred each before they get out of the house and blah 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 repeat 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 and suddenly the end you know I apologize I'm giddy tonight I have to say 
So anyway, after that, what did you see? Asked Lowney Druth. How he could still retain interest at this stage. I saw a billion men in the hostel. All right. Do I have to explain what each of them were wearing? I saw an apartment with three men in it, said Inkale. Three swirling grey cloaks about them, a cup of water before each man, and a bunch of watercress in each cup. Explain that, Fur Rogan. Not difficult that, said Fur Rogan, living up to his usual 80% success rate. Dove and Dun and Dor are they, the three cup bearers of the King of Chower. They are the sons of Law and Aidje. Woe to him who carries out this destruction, if only because of those three, said Launay Druth. You do not rule me, said Inkale. Clouds of blood will come to you. I'm just getting more dramatic as the story reaches its conclusion. After that, what did you see? Amazing this ever got published, says Mavanwe. Was it Mavanwe that said that? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll have to read out the Irish version just for the crack. I'll probably butcher 90% of the pronunciations. I saw a man who was blind in his left eye and destructive in his right, said Inkale. He was carrying a pig's head towards the fire and it was squealing. Explain that, Fur Rogan. And at this stage, Fur Rogan says, no. I couldn't be bothered. A squealing pig's head. I haven't a clue what that means. Listen, I'm going to offer a nap or maybe a, a pint of mead or a few pints. Not difficult that, said Fur Rogan. Yes, he's on his, he's on his, he's on the up again. No, oh, oh, that one. The swine herd of Bov from Shiarfemen. And Bov, of course, is Bov Jarag, who's a brother of the Dagda. And at one time, king of the Tuatha Dé Danann, he was never he has never attended a feast where he did not shed blood. Woe to him who carries out this destruction! If only because of that one man," said Launay Druth. "You do not rule me," said Inkil. <laughs> "Clouds of blood will come to you. Rise now, Fiona." And let us make for the house. Yay! <laughs> no more. What did you see? They're actually scurrying towards the house at this stage. Brilliant. <laughs> at that, the plunderers rose and made for the house. And they raised a loud shout. A little bit like the army going over the top, you know? Like when King Theoden is clanging the swords and shields at the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Like when... Blackadder and his chums go over the top. Hush, said Conora. What is that? Fianna encircling the house, said Colonel Kernock. And Fianna, in this case, meaning soldiers, not necessarily referring directly to the Fianna, uh, the, the warrior band of Fionn McCool. Eugenia Whelan is watching. Falcha, Eugenia, good to see you. Hope you're keeping safe and well. There are youths here to meet them, said Conora. They will be needed tonight, said Conal Kernach. Launay Druth preceded the plunderers into the hostel and the doorkeepers cut off his head. Well, I tell you, isn't that just, just reward for all of the things that he was talking about tonight? Uh, and I mean, as soon as the action comes, he's full of words and full of talk. And as soon as the action comes, he walks into the house and he gets his head cut off. The head was thrown into the hostel three times and it was thrown back out three times, just as Launay Druth had prophesied. 600 fell by Conora before he could reach his weapons. The hostel was fired three times and extinguished three times, and it was conceded that the destruction would not be carried out until Conora had performed some feat of arms. After that, Conora obtained his weapons, and 600 fell at the first onslaught, and the plunderers were routed. So 600 before he could reach his weapons, and 600 after. I told you, said Fur Rogan, that if the Fianna of Eru and Albu were about the house, 
the destruction would none, nonetheless not be carried out until Connor's heat and ardour were quenched. He has only a short time, said the Druids who had accompanied the plunderers, and they caused a weakness for drink to overcome him. Conora entered the house and said, Drink, Papa Makecht. Indeed, I have never taken an order to bring you drink before, said Makecht. You have servers and cup bearers to bring you drink. The order I have taken up to now has been to guard you from the Fianna of Eru and Albu who have encircled the hostel. I will protect you from them and not a single spear will pierce your body. Seek drink from your servers and your cupbearers. After that, Conora sought drink from his servers and cupbearers. There is none, they said. All the liquid in the house was spent extinguishing the fire. <laughs> well, like, it mustn't have been booze, so it must have been just water, because if it was... If it was proper booze, it probably would have caused a worse fire. The river Dothra flowed through the house, but they found no drink for him there. Conora sought drink once more, saying, Drink for me, Makecht, my foster son. I do not care if death follows, for I will die anyway. I believe Katrina is in the house. Conora talk to Katrina. Shugwitch. Conora sought drink a third time, and at that, Makhecht went to the chieftains of Eru, and he offered the warriors in the house the choice of protecting the king or fetching drink for him. Colonel Kernoch answered from within the house, We will protect the king. You go to fetch a drink, since it is you he asked. Makhecht went to fetch drink then. He put Leifur Fleif, son of Conora, under one arm, and under the other he put Conora's gilt cup, which was large enough for an ox to boil over the fire, and he took his sword and his shield and his two spears and a bar of iron that was under the king's cauldron. Tomigama, Katrina, in good form. We're having a bit of crack again, but it's it's good. It's good fun. Sorry. And he took his sword and his shield and his two spears and a bar of iron that was under the king's cauldron. At the entrance to the hostel, he dealt nine blows with the iron bar, and each blow felled nine men. Now come up. Nine times tables, nine nines. 81. He did the edge feet with his sword about his head, and so cut a path out of the house. Makhecht went on to Tipra Kurp, and Tipra is an old Irish word for well, which was nearby in Creach Coland. He had Conor's cup in his hand, but he could not fill it there. Before morning had gone around, the major rivers of Eru, Boas, Boan, Bandi, Burby, Nem, Lai, Laiji, Sinand, Shur, Shlikech, Saur, Savur, Findi, and Rurhek, but he could not fill the cup. He went on until he reached Uron Gerard in Mag E, or Mai E, having first gone round the waters of the chief lakes of Eru, Gerard Dirk, Limnech, Loch Reeb, Loch Fevel, Loch Meska, Loch Norbson, Loch Laig, Loch Cohen, Loch Nechach, Marloch, and still failing to fill the cup. Uron Garaj did not hide from him, so he filled the cup and put the lad under his arm. He returned then and reached the hostel before morning. When Makhecht reached the third ridge from the house, he saw two men striking Connor's head off. He struck the head from one of the two men, but the second made to escape with Conora's head. On the floor of the hostel near the entrance, 
there happened to be a pillar stone at Makhet's feet. He cast this stone at the second man. It struck the man in the small of the back and his back broke. Makhet struck off the man's head. Then he poured the cup of water into Cunnera's throat and Cunnera's head recited this poem. A good man, Makhet. Welcome, Makhet. He brings drink to a king. He does well. After that, Makhet went after the rout. Only a f- very few, nine, had fallen round Conora, and scarcely a single messenger had escaped to bear the news to the plunderers who were about the house. Where there had been 5,000 and 10 hundred in every thousand, there escaped no more than one-fifth, apart from Inkel and his brothers Ekel and Darty. At the end of the third day, Makhecht was among the wounded on the field of slaughter, and he saw a woman going by. Stay a while, woman, he said. I dare not go to you, she answered, for fear and horror of you. That time has passed, woman, said Makhecht. I give you the truth of my honour and my protection. The woman went to him then. I do not know if it is a fly or an ant or a midge that nips at my wound, Makhecht said. Indeed, it is an ant of the ancient earth, said the woman. I swear by the god, plural, perhaps, my people swear by, said Makhecht. I thought it no more than a fly or a midge. Then he died on the field of slaughter. Conal Kernock escaped, though three fifties of spears had gone through his shield hand. He went to his father's house, bearing fragments of his sword and his shield and his two spears in his hand. He met his father at the entrance to the courtyard of Talchu. David Gilroy is watching Conasatatu Dahi Trinonawa. Swift the dogs that have chased you, my son, said his father. It was a combat with young heroes, old warrior, said Connell. Have you news of Dadurga's hostel? Does your lord live? asked his father. He does not, Connell replied. I swear by the gods my people swear by, it is a coward who would come away alive and leave his lord with the enemy, said his father. My wounds are not white, old warrior, said Connell. He showed his father his shield arm and the three fifties of wounds that had been inflicted upon it. His shield had protected that hand, but it had not protected his right hand. That had been attacked over two thirds of its length. It had been hacked and cut and wounded and riddled, but the sinews had not permitted it to fall off. That hand injured many tonight, and it was much injured, said Amorgin. And of course, that is not our, 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 our That is not the same Amorgin of the Milesians. This is Amorgin, the poet of the Ulsterman. True, old warrior, said Colonel Kernock. There are many to whom it served drinks of death at the entrance to the hostel tonight. Tashe Krechna. That, at long last, is the end, is the finale, is the finish of Togol Brunya da Derga, the destruction of Da Derga's hostel, and the end of Conor Amor, a myth, uh, one who brought great promise uh, to the kingship. And it's an interesting part of the story. Uh, that it was uh, oh, what was the name of the bird man, the changeling at the beginning? It was one of the birds he had hunted in Dublin Bay. Uh, uh, um, uh, something yell. Um, that he was the one who had issued the gasa, and uh, basically foretold what would happen. Uh, 
sort of like a, a, a specter maybe from the other world coming to foretell his downfall. Just going to see if I can find it. I know it was in the uh, Stokes translation. Nemglan, wasn't it? N-E-M-G-L-A-N. And that would be Nevglan. Uh, Glan, Katrina, you might have me with. Nev is heaven, isn't it? Nev, N-E-M, N-E-M-H, Nev. Arnyahar, Atho, Arnyav, or Arnyav. Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, so this sort of heavenly man, whatever the other part means. I can't find it yet. But anyway, I think that's what it was. Nem. No, we'll, 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 we'll just have to find that now. Anyway, yes, Nemglan, N-E-M-G-L-A-N. Brian Langan says, good stuff. Needed a good editor, though. Brian, can I tell you something? If you had to cut out the repetition, you would cut 75% of the story away, and it would be a, a 10-pager, you know? <laughs> it's very funny. Um, uh, yes, let me have a look now. I'm not sure if Katrina Nyav in modern Irish heaven. Yeah, what about Glan? G L A N? Ah, clean, pure. Oh, yes, of course. Clean, clear, bright, exact. Mm, sky bright. Yeah, heavenly bright. A bright bird that had come from the heavens to tell him of his doom. Interesting stuff. Uh, pertaining to those. Uh, uh, creatures, perhaps uh, the uh, the ones that had come, perhaps in in dream, and of course, the whole institution of Connor's reign comes about as the result of the bull feast and the dream uh, that was had of the naked man walking on the road towards Tara, carrying a bird in his hand and a slingshot in the other. Perhaps that is the ultimate price that Connor had to pay uh, for his killing of the bird because he was actually killing uh, a changeling um, or, 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 or something that had taken human form uh, and that was also, or perhaps a, a, a deity of the she, perhaps, Nevglan. Nevglan, here we go. Thank you, Katrina. Is an enigmatic, indistinct figure in Celtic myth. Even his name is ambivalent. It can be interpreted as pure radiance or unclean. <laughs> a shapeshifter, god of the birds, a king, a warrior, and rule giver to sacral kings. He is one of the two of the Danon, powerful deities who inhabited both the physical world and the other world before the arrival of humankind. Early Christian writers identified them as falling an fallen angels. Well, of course they did. It, that's very interesting. You know, so Nevglan. Uh, basically, uh, you know, he's carrying the bird and he arrives at Tara and he is instituted as king. And apparently he had a very successful reign. Uh, most of this is myth uh, and, and pseudo history. We don't know how much of this pertains to reality. I think there are some scholars that maintain that uh, the, the uh, what do you call them, the reavers, the, the raiders, those who are involved in the destruction of the hostel, that this may have been uh, 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 a reference to, uh, coded, of course, in, in myth, to the arrival of the Iran, who were, I believe, a Celtic-era tribe who came and committed some slaughter on this island. And yes, indeed, Paul Blockley, I was thinking just the same thing. Birdman sounds shamanistic. And of course, don't forget, that the bull, the whole thing about the bull feast is exactly that. It is shamanistic, uh, that the 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 dreamer or the druid should eat the flesh of the bull and drink its uh, its uh, its blood, or in some cases eat the flesh of a bull or a horse or even a dog or a cat and itter, utter itter, utter certain words over it, uh, and then go and have a dream. In this case, wrapped up in the hide of the bull, taking the form of the bull, journeying in bull form uh, to get the dream. Eron, yeah, e fada or a i n n, uh, and I can't remember how, where I read that, uh, but I thought that was very interesting, and um, that it's possible in this tale, which let's be honest, is full of uh, repetitious devices. Uh, uh, and and uh, not the least bit of irony um, 
and fate, of course, uh, that wrapped up in this story are some nuggets of historical truth, which I think is very interesting. Did we enjoy ourselves? What are we going to do tomorrow night? I haven't a clue yet, but I'll, I'll think of something. There are uh, several episodes coming about Newgrange and the mythology of Newgrange. Uh, I want to read Altram Chia Ga Vedar. M M E D A R Katrina V M H V Vedar. Altram Chia Ga Vedar about the fosterage of the house of the three drinking vessels, uh, which pertains to Newgrange, uh, and with some Christian elements and some overtly Christianized elements and some uh, original elements, perhaps to some very early elements. Uh, so that's one we will read. That might take two or three episodes. We're going to talk about the reconstruction of Newgrange. Uh, that's not going to be about mythology per se, but there will be myth in it. Um, uh, and I know that's a controversial subject, uh, but uh, let's, uh, let's have a chat about it. Um, what else about Newgrange? Yeah, the other myths of Newgrange. Uh, so the Gawal in Shida, Tukmark uh, Itain uh, we did, uh, and we can read some other bits and pieces. Your library, says Margaret, of course. Yes, we have to do another part of the library. Um, yeah, that, that, that would be a fairly handy one. Oh, yes, and another one that uh, I don't think is on the list, actually, and Jim Conway has just reminded me of it, is Brickrew's Feast. Uh, I don't think that's on the list. I'll take suggestions if you have them now. Or if you have any questions pertaining to tonight's episode, please feel free to ask them. Very glad for all the interaction tonight. Um, Rick, Rick Rue's... Pardon me, Rick Rue's Feast. We've tons and tons still to go. More than enough to keep us going. We've to talk about another stone at Nouth as well. Orion and long distance alignments. The Cygnus Enigma we did cover. I hadn't marked that one off. Yeah, there's loads. There's loads. Altram Chia Gavather. Yeah, I'd like to read that one. I have some thoughts on that one too. Uh, it's sort of very, very interesting stuff in that, actually. And anyway, I hope you all had a great time. Oh, it was good fun, wasn't it? When I was able to uh, quell the awning. It looks like it's slightly clouding over out there. I was hoping maybe to get out with the camera. Explore Jim Fitzpatrick's artwork, please, Anthony, says Dave. Ooh, I could do. I'm not an art art critic per se uh, I'm, I'm not yeah I'll, I, 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 that one I'd have to do a little bit of but of course um, uh, we have uh, covered uh, some of the uh, the figures he, he has painted and we probably will cover more of them uh, so I'm not exactly sure what you would like me to do after that Okay, so I'm just saying at this point. Hmm. Trying to reconnect. Interesting. I just want to say at this point that uh, this is a very, very friendly group. And we're a very open group. And we're a very warm group. I am just warning people right now because I see a comment there. We do not tolerate trolls. We do not tolerate people who want to start fights and arguments. As soon as you do so, you will be kicked right out the door. And I don't mind telling you that. So think of the doors of Dodderiga's hostel, because you'll get kicked right out of one of them if you start misbehaving. There you go. Now there's your stern warning. In the meantime, everyone, thank you very much. I've had a wonderful time. Episode uh, Shakto. 
imagine. Francis Tewt has arrived just as we are finishing. <laughs> Francis, I hope you're, uh, of course, you'll have very good reason for being late, which is no doubt work related. It's good to see you on it anyway. In the meantime, uh, have a very good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. I'll announce the, as usual, in the middle of the day, I'll announce the topic. Uh, we might just do something other than reading from a story for one night at least, uh, something that we can perhaps uh, have a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, more interaction with and less just reading from a book. I like to sort of uh, 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 intersperse the reading with uh, episodes where less reading is involved because it tends to, you know, but anyway, it was entertaining. I'm sure you found tonight. We had a lot of uh, viewers tonight as well, which was which was great. The the most we've we have ever uh, seen on an episode. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe. Keep washing your hands. Keep up your social distancing. Wear a face mask if you're outside, and uh, keep safe. Keep sound. Come back to us tomorrow. In the meantime, call us all. Slong a fold, macarjigal air or fold on down. Good night. Peaceful sleep to all my friends around the world. Come back to us tomorrow evening. We'll see you then for more scalety and more crack and fun and, and, and all of that. Slong of all. And to the YouTubers, good night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Hello, Facebookers. Hello, YouTubers. Good evening.